Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Derek Elliott from Dirk.com and in this is a Clever Poly tutorial and we're shattering a Derek Elliott mug with rigid body. Yeah, sorry Derek. Now there's some weird rigid body problems that I solved in this video because most of us were just hitting a pile of cubes with a sphere and you don't really get to experience many issues. So let's get right into it. Here's our model and you can download it from my Gumroad for free but you can also type in like a million dollars. So first of all, we need to run a cell fracture operation. For that, you need the add-on of course. So just go to edit preferences, add-ons and search for cell fracture. There we go, just turn it on. Now select your object, go to object, quick effects and then go to cell fracture. So I'm going to set my limit to something like 174. Now you can bring up the limit, depends on how many pieces you want. Now one more thing, the material index. If you want the inner part of the shattered pieces to be another material, you can just go to your materials. Right here I have a material cup inside. So it's on the slot 1 and this is slot 0. So go to object, quick effects, cell fracture again. Bring up your limit and in the material index set it to 1. Now it'll pick up the other material and just hit OK. Now our cell fracture is done. First of all make sure all the cells are selected, just hit M and move it to a new collection, call it cells. Now we have our main cup and also the cells. So I'm gonna hide this collection for now because we don't need the main thing yet. Now if you wanted the pieces to be bigger, you can just bring down the source limit to a smaller number. First of all, if you check out the size of this cup, it's about 1.5 meters. Now keep in mind that rigid body don't work with small objects. Like if it's too small, the simulation is not going to be able to calculate the collisions and stuff like that. It's very weird, but when you scale the objects, it just works. So if you see any weird issues, just bring the scale up and check it again. Now, first of all, I'm going to control A and apply all transforms. Now hold shift and click on one of the pieces. Make sure everything else is selected too and this one is active. Right click, set origin to geometry. Now let's go to the physics tab and click rigid body. Make sure this is active. Now let's come over here to dynamics and I'm going to bring up the damping translation and rotation a little bit. So if you see like um, you run a simulation and your pieces are rotating too fast like they look unrealistic, you can just bring up this value for the rotation. So they'll, I think they'll stop sooner. So over time more velocity will be lost and the rotation will stop sooner. Let's go to object, rigid body and copy from active. Now this is gonna apply this rigid body system to all the pieces at once. So click that and I'll just hit play and see what happens. I don't have high hopes for that but let's play. Oh everything is falling down. So if you're still watching this video that means you're my actual audience and I want to tell you about my product animation course. This is a 3 hours of premium course with 3 independent chapters. So go check it out and you're gonna learn a lot about advanced 3D product animation. Now let's go to the scene properties and right here go to rigid body world and in the field weights set the gravity to zero. I think you can just turn it off from here as well but now let's play. See nothing is happening and I like that. So as long as you're following what I'm doing here and uh, not doing anything weird or your scale is almost the same as mine you should be fine with this. Let me know if you have any issues or anything like that. You can just join our Discord or comment down below and I'll try to help you. So now let's try adding a, an effector object to the scene. So I'm going to get a cube here. There we go. Now let's uh, add an, a rigid body on this and set it to passive because this is something I'm going to move and affect the objects with. So when it hits something, it's not going to be affected, I think, and it will be staying in its own place. So let's click animated because this is an animated object. I'm going to insert a location keyframe and on frame 10 we're going to move it right here and insert a location again. Let's just go back and play that. Oh it's already working. Look at that. At some point we're going to turn on the gravity so that these pieces right here they also move downwards. This is looking pretty good. Let's try something new. Just delete your cube add in a plane here, scale it up and we're gonna set it to rigid body and passive. It's not gonna be animated so it's just a ground plane and now I'm gonna hit control I to select everything else and bring it up right here. Let's 
go to gravity and make it one. So let's play this simulation. Nice. If you look at that, you can see after they fall down, they're kind of rotating a lot, which I don't want. And you can avoid that by selecting a piece, then selecting everything. Go to rigid body, dynamics, and rotation. Just bring that up to 0.5. And I'll just go to object, rigid body, and copy from active. Let's play that. Now you can see they're not rotating much. Can we try something new like a cylinder object? Scale shift Z. I'm gonna give it a quick material here. Let's hit it with that. We are gonna go to the gravity and just turn it off. Go to the physics tab. We're gonna set it to passive and animate it. Make sure you hit control A and apply the scale on this object. It actually breaks it. <laughs> yeah, right. You can just animate this object and it can be like a bullet or something. But one more important thing, you cannot just use that fractured thing before anything even happened, right? First, you need to use the original cup right here so that you can hide these fractures. When it kind of hits the thing right here, you can switch to these instances right there. You know what I mean? So first of all, we're going to use this mesh so that we don't see any of these fractures in there. We can do that easily. Let's um, bring this cup up there real quick. Make sure it's in the position and it hides everything up correctly. Right click on the cells right here and instance to scene and turn off the whole collection. Now it is instance to your scene. If you click on the cells collection right there, First of all, hit Alt G so that it's positioned in the right area. For example, if yours is like over here, you can just hit Alt G and everything will be in its place. Now what you can do with this instance collection, you can go to visibility and turn it off in viewport or renders. So for example, if I want the original to disappear after frame 20 and I want to show the simulated one after 20, so I can do that. Let's go to frame 21 in the both of these keyframes on the cells instanced collection so turn these right there and go to frame 20 back there turn them off and insert them now select this one on 20 we're gonna insert both of these now that one is hidden here if you go to the frame 21 this simulated one is visible now so we're gonna hide that one turn these off and insert them so you can see how we're switching that frame 20 the original thing and frame 21 the simulated one. So yeah, right now we can set our simulation to be like it's breaking on frame 21. Now you can do that however you like. For example, if in your simulation the mug is starting to shatter on frame 61, you're gonna make the the simulation collection visible on frame 61. And before that, you're gonna have your original mesh. So the visibility keyframes work like that. I hope you understand that. If you don't, you can just go back and watch that again. Now I'm going to unhide my cells collection, the main thing, which is simulated. And let's go back. So on frame 15, I'm going to bring this thing back, insert a location keyframe. And on frame 25, I'm going to move it through that thing right there, just like that. And then insert location. Now I'm going to make sure it is hitting that on frame 20. So go to 21, and I'm going to select both of these keyframes, just move it forward right there. So on 21, it is kind of hitting that, all right? I'm doing that because I've set my visibility keyframes before. It's probably not a good idea because uh, first you need to do the simulation, then you can do the visibility thing because we're going to be transitioning from the original thing to the shattered one. And the only reason is these things are visible in the render. And yeah, if you know a solution to that, you can just let me know in the comments. Let's go to rated body world, go to cache and set your end and start keyframe. I'm gonna set my end to 100 because I don't want that much to be baked. Now it depends on your scene. Just click bake to bake the simulation. And if you play that now, there we go. You can see the smooth transition between the original and the, the cup right there, the main cup. So this is the main thing, right? Let's see, if you go to frame 21, it's kind of directly shattered because we are switching to that one 
So this was the tutorial and you're going to find this project file on my Patreon and I'll see you in the next one.